Good morning, everyone. Today, we are going to discuss the PV system operation and maintenance. Uh, we're going to have a short videos that highlight the importance of the PV system operation and maintenance. We are not going to cover the entire uh, requirement in one session. We're going to divide this into multiple sessions. Before we start, we want to discuss the aim of an operation and maintenance plan or actions. Number one is to reduce cost. Cost always play an important role when it comes to any design, inst installation, commissioning of a system. So the aim is to reduce the cost of the overall system, improve the effectiveness of the system, extend the system life, if you have a proper operation and maintenance, you reduce the risk of a failure, you reduce the risk of a system malfunction, which, which could cause a major uh, issues or fault or damage to the equipment or to the system. During, during these operations or during the design installation, uh, commissioning, uh, when you prepare the operation and maintenance plan, you should take into consideration as a minimum the followings. Installed system type and its desired scope. So are you installing, for example, a hybrid system? Are you installing an off-grid? Are you installing an on-grid? Are you installing system to integrate with a generator? Are you installing a system to integrate with a different type of PV system like uh, off-grid is going to integrate with an on-grid system. All this information needs to be taken into consideration. The second important item is PV capacity. The PV capacity, the tilt and orientations. So when it comes to operations, you need to understand that my uh, PV system has the following capa capacity. Okay, Let's say I'm installing a 100 kilowatt PV uh, panels, but they, they're not all oriented and tilted at the same uh, locations, which mean we cannot assume that we have a 100 kilowatt or 80 kilowatt of a peak. Because if you have a tilt east and tilt west, the peak of the two elements will never be at the same time. So it's very important to take this into consideration. Also, you should take the electric load types. For example, do you have a motor? Do you have a starting current? Or does this motor have a in inverter or like a variable frequency drive or a soft starter device? Okay. You should also take the energy storage. Do you need the energy storage to support during a cloudy day? Or you want the energy storage only uh, to be operated for nighttime, after hours? All these are very, very important and critical to take into consideration. Now, if I go to uh, one of the main points, one of the main points that should be considered during the design and construction phases, when I go seek my engineer uh, to design or my company or my uh, client or any uh, person or any company, that complete the design, you need to ask the following questions. Try to deploy equipment with low fa failure rate. So ask around, check the history. Is this company or this equipment has high failure rate or low failure rate? What's the design life ex expectations? Also, does these inverters or any electronic spot that you deploy can be uh, tested remotely or no? Now, during the design and installation phase, you should always ensure you have adequate and clearance access for maintenance. I notice in under multiple situations that they install the system with regardless with zero, zero maintenance capability because you cannot access it. Okay. Select low maintenance equipments or parts. 
So you should always try to go for a equipment that has a low maintenance requirements. Always make sure you build the PV system to the relevant and local standard because if you are building it in this country, every country has a different requirement because of weather, wind, sun, dust. So all this information need to be taken into considerations. You should always apply standard for grid connected or generator connected. You have to make sure that you have the right equipment, right interface between the grid and generator if applicable. Please, during the design, avoid external damage. Could be from the sunlight, could be from rain, could be from exposed to any other uh, conditions. When you use energy storage, make sure you put it in a dry and a properly ventilated systems. It's a very critical, especially if you're using lithium. Please make sure you follow the standard policies and manufacturer recommendations. Now, according to the National Laboratory of the United States Department of Energy, they divided the PV operation into five areas and the PV maintenance into four areas. What are these areas? Number one, they request an administrat administrations of operations. It's a very, very important to administer your operation properly as per the manuals set by the designers and manufacturing of your uh, uh, companies. Conduct properly and adequately the operation as set by the standard and by the designers. Direction for the performance of the work. It's a very critical. Monitoring your work operator knowledge, protocol, and documentations. Now, we go to the four areas in a maintenance, which is administration of maintenance, preventive maintenance, corrective maintenance, condition-based maintenance. Now, in our next few videos, we will discuss each items on its own. So if we start today, if we start today, we will start with administration of operation. What's this involve? This involve is we have to ensure effective implementation and control, including curation of an as-built uh, drawing equipment. You must keep an archive. You must pursuing documents. You must keep record of performance and operation and maintenance measures. You should ensure compliance to regulations and standard. You should ensure yearly budget has contingency plan for operation and maintenance. These captures, these captures the minimum requirement of administrative operations. I hope this video was useful to everyone and I will see you during the next uh, video. Thank you and wish you best of luck.